Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking today at a book which has come to us from Heart Publishing. It's called UK Merger Control, and it's this book here. It's a heavy book, navy blue cover. It's got um, nearly 900 pages in it, 850 certainly. There's a, the index at the back. The book itself is, as I say, a heavy book. It's got the standard way in which it's uh, produced with the reference numbering at the side there, and then you've got the footnotes at the bottom. Some of the footnotes are quite long in this particular book. You've also got at the front a very useful index, which starts off with the overview of our current motor control policy, which I think is well worth starting with. The preface and the introduction help out too, and then we get into the what they call relevant merger situations, which again I think is extremely important and actually very topical at this current time, bearing in mind what's been going on in the summer of 2011. As I say, this is a book written by two professional uh, and highly experienced people, Jonathan Parker and Adrian Majonda. And there's also a consulting editor and a contributor, Simon Pritchard. My wife Elizabeth and I have given this the title, How Big is Too Big? Here's an up-to-date practitioner's guide to UK merger control. And that's really what it's aiming at. But certainly it's got a bit more to it because this is a subject that's become very, very significant during the, the summer of 2011. Because the question is, when big companies aim to get bigger, not necessarily by organic growth, but by merging with or acquiring other companies, how far can they go in pursuit of their corporate aims? We're talking here about size, power and control, hence the perceived need by governments to impose a merger control regime on business. And that's really where the book comes in, because it's this somewhat simplistic but important question of how big is too big is legally addressed by our merger, uh, by our merger control legislation, now contained, of course, in the Enterprise Act 2002. That's when merger control provisions came into force in June 2003. And the Enterprise Act, of course, uh, replaced the Fair Trade Act and really has modernised business practice throughout uh, Europe. What we've got is a new framework for merger control in the UK. And really the book addresses those issues. But things and events are moving forward. The resulting changes that we've got, of course, have, uh, have been actually quite complex, and that's why UK merger control um, is so sorely needed, especially at a time of writing when issues relating to mergers and acquisitions have become big news again. Um, we're not just looking at B-Sky-B and News Corp, but we're thinking about the, the more general picture as well. The book's a delightful practitioner's guide, which offers insights and guidelines on how far, say, the business community can go in the pursuit of a merger, particularly if the organisation concerned is exceptionally large, with millions in pounds, pence and people possibly at stake. As uh, has been mentioned actually in the preface to the book, it focuses to a large extent on comparing the approach under the Enterprise Act with the approach taken, say, under the merger regulations and, uh, and all the guidelines from the USA. And I think that's, again, a very helpful picture because one thing that is becoming apparent, and that is that these issues are no longer very parochial, they are global, and we have to look at it, in a, again, in a rather different way. The aim has been, therefore, to emphasise the many areas of importance to practitioners and, of course, their clients, including, to cite only one example, the concept of enterprises ceasing to, uh, to be distinct. The book's laid out, as I've indicated, in uh, almost 900 pages in a fairly logical fashion, covering 18 chapters. And I think chapter 18, which is the very final chapter, which is just here, that one there, on judicial review, is of particular relevance to practitioners, bearing in mind what is going on at the moment. Um, throughout the work, um, I think it takes a, a, a scholarly, thorough, and yet a very practical approach to the problems we have. It's extremely wide-ranging and deals with this complex area uh, very well. The book, I think, will be certainly welcomed by practitioners in this area, 
and anybody interested with m and matters, frankly. And as one would expect from a work of this scope and stature, there are ample resources throughout, uh, including tables and so forth. As I say, the only thing I did find rather surprising was the extent of some of the footnotes. But don't worry about that, because that will give you the, the detail that you may well want. So thank you very much to the two authors. There's a side view of the, the spine of the book. Jonathan Parker and Adrian Vajonda. I think they produced an excellent uh, piece of, uh, of um, statement of copy on this. And Simon Pritchard has been also very helpful. Thank you also to Hart for producing it. Bye-bye.